Well, hey fans, welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk Spoilers, and today we're talking spoilers for Deadpool and Wolverine. Now I know, I know my next Let's Talk Spoilers was supposed to be uh, Invincible Season 2 Part 2, but even though I have finished that show, I still haven't even done my review so I just had to push it back, it, and, and I'll get more into that when I actually do it. That it'll probably be next, but I really wanted to get into Deadpool and Wolverine. Um, I was invited to an advanced screening. Uh, I've seen it. I really did enjoy the movie. I think it is fun in terms of a score. I believe I give it a seven point five out of ten. It, it it is not my favorite Deadpool movie. It is not even my favorite MCU movie. And in terms of the multiverse saga it's probably in the top i don't know probably within the top five i'll have to look over that and rank those before the end of this uh recording but yeah it is a fun movie and i think it did what it needed to do it's already making buku bucks i think it will break a billion dollars but just getting into the story just getting into the story uh, picks up immediately after the events of Deadpool 2. He's using uh, Cable's time watch to, you know, fix the timelines, travel throughout. And at the end of that situation, he travels to the MCU and basically wants to join the Avengers. He's interviewing with Happy Hogan, which is pretty funny. And this is shown on the screen that this is 2018. So I think this is like right before either before or during Avengers Infinity War. So before things all go to hell. So he's trying to join the team. Happy Hogan basically says, look, I don't think this is the right gig for you because the Avengers are on the team because they want to help people. You want to join the team because you need it. So he needs to figure out what he wants to do. He goes back home. This kind of puts him in a low place. He breaks up with Vanessa and he's living with Blind Al again, and he's working with Peter as a used car salesman. And the jokes are pretty funny. Like, he says some pretty crude adult jokes in front of children in this car that he's test driving and makes fun of the Honda Odyssey. I really did enjoy that aspect of it. Um, and, of course, as the scene shows up that we all saw in the trailers, the TVA comes and picks him up. And so, basically, and like I said in my review, the TVA is granting Deadpool sacred timeline status. They're like, you're going to join the MCU. He's head over heels happy about that and gets dressed in his new suit and is like, well, I'm ready to take my friends, too. And they're like, no, it's just you. You get to be in the MCU. And here's a weird thing. Apparently... Paradox says these are higher up orders that he gets to join the MCU and that the rest of his timeline is going to die. But as the movie progresses, he's like off on his own doing this weird experiment to kill the Fox timeline. And it's not that somebody gave him those orders. So was it Paradox himself who was like, I like Deadpool. I want him to get to the sacred timeline, which there's. And I get it. There shouldn't be a sacred timeline anymore with the fact that Loki took over and he's letting all the timelines flourish. So there really shouldn't be a sacred timeline anymore unless this is just paradoxes. You know, he liked the old ways the way Kang was doing it. But basically, you know, Deadpool doesn't allow that and they bring up the whole thing about a timeline anchor. So in Deadpool's timeline, which is the Fox timeline, when Wolverine died at the end of Logan, he was the anchor being. So after him the timeline just begins to fall apart. And apparently this process can take thousands of years. And they don't really go into like how that works, the timeline dying or falling apart. We do know, at least in this timeline, I, I don't know exactly if Deadpool's traveling through time and just created multiple branches or how that works, but it at least makes it to the future where Cable is. So, and Cable does not appear in this. He's only mentioned... Um, so there's that. So Deadpool gets the brilliant idea that he will just replace Wolverine in his timeline. And that'll fix everything. So the first thing he does is steal a time pad, I think it's called a time pad or whatever. Tent pad goes to the future in Logan and digs up Wolverine's grave because he's like, you have healing powers. He's not dead. Finds the skull. And this is actually where the movie opens with this great dance scene uh, to Instinct's Bye Bye Bye. 
but they kind of cut back to it. But like, yeah, Logan is dead. He's just a skeleton. And he uses that skeleton to kill like all these members of the TVA, which is pretty hilarious. It's probably one of the best openings I've ever seen. But also from there, when he realized, all right, I got to go find another Logan to replace the this one, basically. And he visits all these timelines. And I think this was a mistake by the MCU and not getting multiple actors to play the variants of Logan. You got the short King Wolverine, who's like the comic accurate height Wolverine. It's just a superimposed Hugh Jackson's face on a small body. So you got that. You have the Weapon Omega Wolverine, who only has one arm. Uh, he's like more feral looking. You got the Wolverine from the comic cover where he's like crucified on the X and there's like a bunch of skulls around him. You got Wolverine when he fights the Hulk. So we get a small cameo from the Hulk in that scene, which is pretty good. And the best one, oh, I almost forgot. There's also Patch. Like I said, they're all Hugh Jackman. But the best one that I liked because it was a different actor was Henry Cavill, who appears as the Cavalrine. That's what Deadpool calls him. And he makes a good joke about how uh, Marvel Studios is going to treat him way better than Warner Brothers and DC Studios did. But he's, like, not having it, of course, because he's a Wolverine. And just kind of, like, he does the reloading arm cock from Mission Impossible. Uh, and, like, just his claws come out when he does it and just punches Deadpool through. And that leads Deadpool to the Wolverine that's in this movie and this Wolverine they they kind of explain his backstory later on is that he goes out to a bar and gets drunk and while he's gone humans come and kill the rest of the X-Men and this leads him on some kind of berserker rage where he gets revenge but I guess goes too far it, it's it's like a it's not really the greatest backstory in my opinion but yeah Deadpool finds this Wolverine takes to the TVA the TVA is like nope this isn't gonna work and they send them both to the void. So in the void, they run into Johnny Storm and a bunch of other outcast mutants. And Deadpool gets Johnny Storm killed. And it's Chris Evans, Johnny Storm, which is funny. And they go and meet Cassandra Nova. And they have that first interaction, which is fine. You get to see all these other mutants who have appeared in the Fox universe. Some played by actors who were in the roles before. You got Ray Park as Toad, Tyler Maine as a Sabretooth. So a lot of people are returning. So some of them, though, like, they're barely, you know, you can barely see them. Like, Kelly, who was Lady Deathstrike? I'm pretty sure it was her. And so is the guy who played Azazel. But I feel like they didn't need, if, if their roles weren't going to be bigger, then I don't know why. They cast him. Aaron Sanford as Pyro. He actually plays a big part. He has speaking roles or whatever. So that's why he's there. The The guy who plays Juggernaut is interesting because I think what happened was they were supposed to like superimpose Vinnie Jones' face over his. But I guess something happened and it, they weren't able to get it scheduled. So they just left like the stand-in actor like, hey, congrats, you get this role as Juggernaut. So Ryan Reynolds makes like a joke like, are you like the third Juggernaut we have now? So I think that's what's supposed to happen there. Same thing with um, Psylocke. That's not Olivia Munn. It's just some random lady. So it's just interesting. All of those characters who appeared working for Cassandra Nova, I feel like they should have had a more integral part, especially this like the farewell to the Fox universe. But they have that whole original meeting. Johnny Storm gets killed. Wolverine and Deadpool escape. They run into Nice Pool. And Dogpool, Mary Puppins, which was pretty cute. And they borrow his uh, car, which is a Honda Odyssey, which Deadpool hates. And they go on this road trip, basically, to find the Resistance, the people who Johnny Storm was working with. And I forgot to mention, there are two pretty cool fights. Uh, one fight already happened early in the film with Deadpool and Wolverine. That was a pretty decent fight. It's the one you see in the trailer in front of the Fox logo before they meet Johnny Storm. And then they have another fight in the van, which is kind of played like it's a sex scene. Like they have like that grease music playing and they're just stabbing each other. And it's a pretty fun fight. I think their fights were the best. I really enjoyed that. Uh, but of course they fight all night long and pass out and they are saved by someone. They wake up in this lair and that lair is where they meet Johnny Storm's teammates, who is Electra, 
my favorite hero of all time. Blade, played by Wesley Snipes. Electra's played by Jennifer Gardner. Uh, Gambit, who's played by Channing Tatum, who never really got to play him in the movie, even though he was cast, but that was before the whole Disney buyout thing. And Daphne King returns as X-23. So that is who we get to see there. There's a funny uh, joke about how Punisher went to go challenge Cassandra Nova, got killed. Daredevil went to go challenge Cassandra Nova, got killed. And uh, he, like, apologizes to Elektra about it. And she's like, don't worry about it. Because, you know, Ben Affleck and Jennifer Gardner got married after filming Daredevil together, had a family. They were recently divorced. So it was a funny joke. Also, Wesley Snipes, uh, his blade not liking Deadpool and making those jokes about how, yeah, you didn't like me because we all know Channing, not Channing Taylor, <laughs> Ryan Reynolds played Hannibal King and Blade Trinity, which, two things. So Blade, in this movie, never uses his iconic sword. He has, like, his little boomerang thing, and he has this other giant, like, machete almost thing, but he doesn't use his iconic acid etched sword and that really kind of irked me a little bit why they wouldn't give him that i really wish he did and also you have the movie set in the void with all these variants they could have put so many people from the fox universe in this and i know blade was new line but still you have ryan reynolds and ryan reynolds is i don't know why he didn't reprise his role as hannibal king in this movie that would have been hilarious especially if you have blade And he has both of them to deal with. And I I just think that was a missed opportunity. Uh, And with Gambit, I think it was a missed opportunity not having both Gambits. Um, Like, that that would have been pretty cool. But they decided to go fight Cassandra Nova, which this storyline and her as the main villain, as big as the Void is, and we've seen it in Loki, it's weird. Like, when Loki went into the Void, Loki and Sylvie, and they meet all these other Loki variants. They didn't meet any other variants. Deadpool goes in. He meets all these other mutant characters. And then so, it's like, I wish they fleshed out the Void more. And also, why are people still getting sense of the Void if the TVA has changed? There's so many plot holes surrounding that whole aspect. But them going back to fight Cassandra Nova, just that whole, it was a fun scene. It was great seeing everybody fight. But then they're able to, like... Defeated with the Juggernaut's helmet, which has abilities in the comics, but they never explain those abilities in the movies and how his helmet is made that way. Same thing with Magneto. Like, all those jokes are funny, but in terms of, like, a story, it just kind of didn't really make sense. It was just kind of like, we need to get to here so we can get to here. But, uh, like, they fight Cassandra Nova, and they kind of trick her and get her to do something for them. And there's something I didn't actually... I kind of noticed it in my screening, but I only found out afterwards online. So... She mentions that, oh, this amateur magician came in and uh, she killed him, basically. And it's a Doctor Strange variant is who they're alluding to it being, but we don't actually know. And she pulls out the sling ring. There is a reality stone and a soul stone in, or is it a reality stone and a time? I think it's a reality stone and a time stone in the sling ring. So those are two infinity stones. So that's what allows her to let them leave the void because she opens the portal, which is another weird thing. You have to be adept at using magic to use that. So it is strange that she could actually open the portal. And she didn't have like a Scarlet Witch variant or somebody else in there. I think that would have worked better. But they end up back in the main Deadpool timeline. Where Paradox is trying to destroy it. Because he doesn't want to wait that long. And he liked how they did things before they knocked out He Who Remains. And... I guess there would be more people like that. There's like a lot more I feel like they could have fleshed out, made this a longer movie. But he has like a time ripper that's going to destroy the timeline. So my issue with that is, why does he need this giant machine? Because in the ori- in, in Loki season 1 and season 2, the TVA, they have these tiny little bombs that they would just set off that would destroy an entire timeline. Like when Loki originally, you know, got the... Tesseract disappeared and did things differently. They caught him and they B-15 just set off that little bomb doot, and they left and it just erased that timeline. So why do they need a whole time ripper now? Didn't really make sense. And so nice pool shows back up and he's followed by Mary Puppins and the Deadpool Corps. Now, 
this scene was really fun to see, kind of. Like, so basically in this scene, Nice Pole gets killed, which is actually, the way that happens is funny. But the Deadpool core works for Cassandra Nova. Why? It doesn't really make sense. And the the main ones, I think it's funny. Okay, so Lady Deadpool is actually played by Blake Lively, who is Ryan Reynolds' wife. Uh, Kid Pool is played by Ryan Reynolds' daughter. And Baby Pool is played by his other kid. So, and... I think Nathan Fillion is head pool. I think that the Deadpool kid or Cowboy Deadpool is Matthew McConaughey. And there's a few other celebrity voices in there. I don't really know them all. But I will say this. Blake Lively is Lady Deadpool. For some reason, I just like that character. And I want her to appear more. Like, the way she says, Uzi time, baby. Like, I just enjoy that. But this is the scene where it's like a old boy-esque fight scene where they just kind of move across and like a like a panel almost and so Deadpool Wolverine have to fight all the other Deadpools to get to Cassandra Nova and it just felt weird because I don't know I didn't want the other Deadpools to be like evil and they're not even like by the end of the fight scene they're like friends again because of Peter it was almost like a you need that faceless army that they can just kill like your Outriders or your Chitauri you need something like that. And I guess they just decided to play it as a joke and have them kill a bunch of Deadpools. But this is the scene where Wolverine finally puts on his uh, cowl. And it's funny because when you see it about to happen, like I've seen the reactions online. It is a fun scene. It's cool to finally see him wear it. But like that cowl is nowhere throughout the whole movie. When he's running around, you don't see anything hanging back there. And I think that's another missed opportunity. You should have had it hanging back there the whole time and he just doesn't wear it so when the scene comes up he pulls it out of nowhere and when he puts it on you can tell it's digital it's fake it doesn't look real it looks actually worse than like dead so when ryan reynolds wears the deadpool mask he has on an actual mask and they put the eyes on like in post the eyes are fake they should have had and then maybe they didn't just look bad they should have had Hugh Jackman wear an actual mask and do his white eyes in post. Or do the eyes like Spider-Man or something. I don't know. It just didn't look right. It looked off. And it made me feel like, okay, I'm glad we haven't gotten the mask. Because they it just clearly looks weird. And even when they... So this fight scene where they're killing all these Deadpools. Like the way Wolverine moves. It all looks cartoonish. It looks like it is just overdone. It's campy. The way he's stabbing. and it, it, it I just didn't care for it as much. And... Yeah, I mean, it, when I think about this movie, I do think about it is a fun movie. I clapped, I cheered, I laughed. But in terms of being like a good MCU movie, like, it's not bad. But it is not like this farewell to the Fox universe like I thought it was going to be. Like, I thought everybody was going to show up. I thought I was going to see so many X-Men characters. Fantastic Four characters. People who, like, all those old movies, I thought they were going to somehow get a lot of people back if they could. And... Uh, it just didn't work out. You know, they get down there, they save the day, they work together, and somehow they save the Fox timeline, and it is no longer dying, it's regenerating, which I don't, I don't know. And Wolverine stays in that timeline, which is technically the past. So there should be two Wolverines in that timeline right now, because Deadpool is in the Fox universe, where there are X-Men, and there's Wolverine. It's before Logan, so technically there's two Wolverines. And then at the end, he brings Daphne Keen, or a version of, you know, X-23, Daphne Keen, to that past timeline. So there's a few just plot holes that this movie creates that I don't think it needed to create. And that that's basically the movie. And there's so much more I could probably talk about. Wesley Snipes says some motherfucker still trying to ice skate uphill. That was a funny line. I I just wish it were a better movie. Uh, but I am happy I got to see it. I'm happy that I had the theatrical experience. And it's weird. I didn't. So I saw this at my screening. I did not feel the urge to go back to a theater to watch it. But I kind of wish I did. Like when Spider Man No Way Home came out, seeing that opening night, and even knowing Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire are going to show up, seeing that in a theater with a bunch of people was a great experience. And I feel like this Deadpool Wolverine was a great theater experience as well. But, you know, I got kids now. So, I really can't just run out and see movies all the time. So, just at a different point in my life. But, yeah. Uh, 
like I said, enjoyable movie. I think Hugh Jackman's going to take another break. I think Ryan Reynolds is going to take a break. I think the next time we see these characters is going to be Secret Wars. Uh, and that makes the most sense. I think Secret Wars might end up being two movies. My guess as of right now, even though so they just had their whole Comic-Con Hall H in San Diego, and we now know that the King Dynasty is out, which is sad, and is now Avengers Doomsday. We don't know if like Kang is just out or if they are going to recast Kang, but Doom's the primary focus is Robert Downey Jr., which is just weird. But I don't want to get too much into that. But so we'll see if it's going to be like Avengers Doomsday, Avengers Secret Wars, and then like Avengers Battle World or whatever. If they're going to do a third one, but I think the next time we see Tobey Maguire, Hugh Jackman, Ryan Reynolds is going to be Avengers Secret Wars. So. This is getting a little long, and I don't want it to go on too long. I used to do these. They last like 40 minutes. Not doing that anymore. Um, I hope Lady Deadpool returns. I, I like her character. Um, and I did mention, like on Twitter, I do think they should make another Deadpool movie, like a Deadpool 4. And I think it should be Deadpool and Spider-Man, because that is another team up with Deadpool that we should see that would be great that should be its own movie and you can do it like like characters like Deadpool and Spider-Man the thing about them is you can have your big actors play them but they're not really necessary the only thing that's necessary from them is their voice because Deadpool and Spider-Man they wear their masks most of the time unlike other heroes so I get Ryan Reynolds is tired he wants to be with his family but I think you just say hey look we're gonna shoot you for a week put you in the makeup get all the stuff we need where we see your face first and then just put in a stunt double put in a stunt double for the rest of the outfit and then have ryan reynolds adr in the rest of his lines and then you can shoot that movie for cheaper and you can get it done same thing with spider-man but yeah deadpool and spider-man should be deadpool 4 it should take place after spider-man 4 which hopefully we find out about that soon as well but yeah those are my thoughts those are my thoughts on deadpool wolverine so before i forget in terms of ranking the multiverse saga movies i guess i'm gonna have to go and this is from my favorite to my least favorite uh spider-man no way home black panther wakanda forever guardians of the galaxy volume three shang chi and the legend of the ten rings deadpool and wolverine Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, Black Widow, Eternals, Thor Love and Thunder, and the Marvels at the bottom. So that is probably, at this moment, how I would rank the Multiverse Saga. My next Let's Talk Spoilers is probably going to be <laughs> Invincible Season 2 Part 2. Uh, I'll get that out to you guys. So I'd like to thank you guys for joining me for another spoiler review. Remember, you can watch the full review on YouTube and the website, flipfogllc.com slash flicksrog. Remember, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Reddit. And please, pretty please, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, I'll be seeing you. <laughs>